You are now listening to the Flurry Podcast, hosted by Marquise Rawls. Another episode of the Flurry Podcast, and I'm literally a couple minutes fresh off the Navarrete versus Diaz fight and the undercard, which was Belenga versus a uh, Nicholson fight. And I'm going to start off with the Belenga fight. As I've said before, the first round knockout streak, it's a novelty act. Don't get fooled by it. Now, I'm not saying that Belenga is a trash fighter or garbage. He's really, really good. He good. He had a good performance against Nicholson. And some people are saying that this is the start of, you know, him really becoming the best fighter at 168 pound division and everyone's celebrating like, yeah, he did it. But this isn't a fight for celebration. It's not. Nicholson was hurt seven out of the eight rounds and you couldn't get that guy out of there. That guy, the guy where his legs were gone since round five, you couldn't get him out of there. He literally didn't change anything. His defense wasn't that good. Yes, he made slight adjustments with um, his head movement. He started blocking a little bit more. His defense got a little bit tighter. But like I said, his legs were gone since round five. So he was leaning on the ropes for literally majority of the second half of the fight. And you could have just literally just started laying it on him and got him out of there. You can't celebrate this win. It's a good win. He showed he had some skill. Belinga showed that he has talent. His power is obviously still real because every punch that he lands seemed to do damage and hurt him. And like I said, Nicholson was hurt seven out of the eight rounds. So Belinga, his power is true and it's real, but he's missing something. His skill set is not up there yet. And this is what I was afraid of. I was afraid of when he finally meets some opposition who can take him the distance and even though it was just an eight round fight, not a 12 round fight. They still went the distance, you know, quote unquote, the distance with eight rounds. I was afraid that when he fought someone who was good enough to take him to the distance and Nicholson, he's a decent fighter. You know, I wouldn't go as far as saying that he's a, a good or really good fighter or a talented fighter, but he's a decent fighter. But I was afraid when Belinga would fight someone of his caliber who could take him the distance that we would really get to see the full package of him and realize that he's not as talently gifted as we initially thought he was. And that's what I saw because he talks a big talk, which I love it. I love when boxers talk the big talk. A lot of boxers, almost every new up and coming boxer who, who is trying to be a star, they talk that big talk and I respect it. And I actually want you to do it. But at the end of the day, you have to show out in impressive fashion. And this one, he showed he has the power, he has the skill, but it wasn't impressive to me. This wasn't the type of fight where a David Benavidez would be like, oh man, that's a scary guy right there. You know, I need to work extra hard. David Benavidez will run fucking through you. Caleb Plant will literally just outbox you for eight rounds. Charlo will literally sit in the pocket with you and beat you. Like... <laughs> This it, it wasn't a performance where the top names that you want to fight are shaking in their boots from. This isn't that performance. Now, it's a good performance for someone like you, but the hype behind you, it doesn't match the performance. So good fight overall. I enjoyed it. And people are probably going to be upset that I called him a novelty act and everything. Eh, what about Triple G? Triple G, he was a novelty act with his power and everything. Yes, but until until Triple G started fighting champions and former champions and people with impeccable resumes and people who had good amateur careers and Olympians, and he was knocking them the fuck out. That's when he went from being a novelty act with a guy who's known for having his devastating power to the best motherfucker at 160. And he didn't slow down at all through his whole reign of terror. He didn't have no, no, no questionable bouts. It was no question that this guy was real about everything that he said that he was going to do to every opponent. Now you look at Belenga, he didn't really fight no one who had a, a good resume. He didn't really fight no former champions. He didn't really fight no, 
you know, no vets or legends. He didn't really fight no one who, you know, is reputable in the sport of boxing. So now I look back at the, at those 17 knockouts and I could kind of say, yeah, a lot of them, they was cherry picked. A lot of them was cherry picked. A lot of those boxers, they um just, I can't even say amateurs because like, is there anything less than amateur? Is there anything less than amateur? But, you know, good job by his team for cherry picking a lot of those fights, though. But let me stop, you know, slandering his name because he won the fight. Um, it was a performance that, like I said, he should be able to get, you know, bigger and better names. But it just wasn't enough uh, for me to say that you could compete with the big names like the Canelos and the David Benavidez and the Caleb Plants and the, the Charlos and, you know, the other big names at... Um, 160 or 168 whatever uh he plans to do now let me get to the main event of this card navarrete versus diaz navarrete very very active i believe he's one of the most active uh champions in all of boxing uh i can't remember his last fight i know he fought two times in the bubble so his last fight it had to be late 2020 but it doesn't matter he come back Fighting Diaz, who is a tough, tough son of a bitch, man. This guy, he withstood it all. He went through the eye of the storm. And he managed to withstand every single hard punch round after round after round until uh, I believe it was the last round. And it just got a little bit too much for him. And Navarrete, with his power, with his awkward style, with his angles that he takes and the way he just moves around the ring, man, sometimes it's just hard to escape the onslaught that he throws at you. And this was one of those times. But I will say Diaz, he did some fantastic work on the inside. Even though a lot of the exchanges on the inside, he wasn't winning. He was landing very good shots. Uh, he landed some good body shots that seemed to make uh, Navarrete a little bit uncomfortable or at least um, alter his game plan just slightly or just a little bit. Uh, so that's definitely something that Navarrete's next opponent is going to be looking forward to uh, in his future fights. I believe that Navarrete versus Shakur Stevenson, if Shakur Stevenson uh, decides to stay or remain at 126 or come back at 126, uh, that fight would be fantastic. I would love to see that. But Diaz really did some good stuff. He's a strong fighter. He landed a lot of clean punches. And Navarrete, man, your defense. You got to up your defense, man. You have to up your defense. Your defense is good. It's good. But you got to up your defense, man. Diaz, uh, Diaz landed a lot of, a lot of bombs that, frankly, he should not have been landing when you have the height advantage. And, uh, you know, just the, ex the advantage of your experience and the movement and everything. But Diaz, he skilled fighter. You know, I don't know too much about him, but I can tell that he's a he's a skilled fighter. And he would have gave any top name at 126 a uh, really good run for their money. Very very tough opposition, tough tough chin. Even though he went down, um, like what three four times he went down. I believe it was three. He still never gave up. Uh, it was definitely the type of fight that I really wanted to see. It was just you know a give and take on both sides. Um, very, very one-sided most of the fight because Navarrete, he's just too, too good. No need for me to read the stats of this fight, neither. I'm just going to go into what should be next for Navarrete moving forward. Like I previously said, I believe him and Shakur Stevenson, they should fight each other. I said in previous episodes before, multiple times, I would never bet against Shakur Stevenson, so my money and all my cryptocurrencies that I'm currently losing money on, which I'm highly upset about, but I will bet them all on Shakur Stevenson. Bam. And it's a safe investment. Very, very safe investment. Shakur Stevenson, he's one of the best, if not the best, all around fighter in all of boxing. And uh, Navarrete would definitely give him the fight of his life. He will be landing a lot of punches. He will be uh, using his awkward style to, to, to his advantage. But the one key thing that Shakur Stevenson would do is he would stay poised. He would not let Navarrete use his, his size and his ring movement to, um, to control the fight. And 
he will use Navarrete's slowness against him. I didn't really realize it till this fight, and I've seen a bunch of Navarrete fights, and um, I think it was because he's like, I'm so used to watching him just beat down on everyone that he fights that watching someone who was dishing it out as much or close to as much as Navarrete was giving it. Uh, Navarrete is really slow as far as like his punching. Um, he His hands is not that fast. He doesn't move as fast as footwork is not as fast and he tends to get off balance quite a bit. And uh, Shakur Stevenson is someone who would definitely use those disadvantages against him um, in his favor. And that's to me is going to be the the tipping point for why Shakur Stevenson will win. Um, as far as strength and power, Shakur Stevenson has really, really good strength and power, but I don't know if he is as strong or as powerful as Navarrete. Uh, technical skill, Shakur Stevenson has that hands down. But Navarrete, he seems to, you know, he has an awkward style and he has that incredible um, arm length. So he uses different ways to negate some of the technical aspects or the technical advantage that some of his opponents have. But the speed and the footwork of Shakur Stevenson will be the number one reason why he's going to win this fight. Mark my words. Okay, that's it for the podcast. I'm out. Peace, King. You were just listening to the Floyd Podcast hosted by Monkeys Rawls. Come back for the next episode or go back and listen to the previous ones if you haven't done so. 